Welcome to CKLA Knowledge 10, Lesson 5, The Legend of Betsy Ross. Let's take a little trip to remember who have we learned about. Do you remember who Paul Revere is? He was a real man who made a ride similar to the one that was told in our story. He worked with the Sons of Liberty and rode his horse through the colonies. Do you remember what he yelled along that historic ride? George Washington, we've learned about him. He was elected to be the commander in chief in the Continental Congress Army. He left the meeting to lead the colonists in battle against the British Army. Benjamin Franklin, remember he lived across the ocean in London, but came back to America and the representatives were happy to have his insight as decisions were made on how to declare independence from Great Britain. Last but not least, we've learned about Thomas Jefferson. He was the youngest representative at the Second Continental Congress. From Virginia, he was known as a powerful writer. He was elected to author the declaration that would be sent to Great Britain. Let me introduce you to someone else very important to our history as a nation. Today in our read aloud, you're going to hear a legend about a woman named Betsy Ross. A legend is a story told over years that cannot be proven true. Today's story is about Betsy Ross and how she creates the first flag for our new country. Now the flag Betsy Ross designs in this legend is very similar to the one we have now, but not exactly the same. Our purpose for listening to our story today is to discover a legend about the flag Betsy Ross made. To describe events that led up to the Revolutionary War and to understand the word alternating. Betsy and John Ross were newlyweds in 1773 when they opened their seamstress shop in the busy port town of Philadelphia. A seamstress is a person who sews with needle and thread to make or repair things made of cloth. John hung a sign outside their house at 239 Arch Street. The needle and spool of thread helped people find their shop. At about the same time that Betsy and John were having a party to celebrate their wedding, Patriots in Boston were having their own party, the Boston Tea Party. And you remember what a party that was. The Patriots used the sea as a giant teapot, dumping shiploads of tea into it. After that night, the colonies decided to work together to come up with a plan for answering the British demand for taxes. The meeting of representatives from all 13 colonies, the first Continental Congress, was held in the Ross's hometown of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Midway between the New England colonies and the Southern colonies, Pennsylvania was an important meeting place for colonists from all over. 
John and Betsy found it an exciting time in which to live, especially as the Patriots began to gather there. John agreed with the Patriot cause and wanted to break away from Great Britain. One night, Betsy's husband, John, died suddenly. It was very sad and not yet three years since Betsy and John Ross had celebrated their wedding day. After John's death, Betsy decided to run the seamstress business on her own. Betsy Ross was an independent woman. She took great pride in her work and had become well known throughout the colonies for her tiny and even stitches and beautiful cloth. When men gathered in Philadelphia for meetings, they often ordered clothing from Betsy for their families at home. No order was too difficult for her. As war approached, Betsy was asked to make flags for the Pennsylvania Navy. The Continental Army, led by General George Washington, flew one of her flags as well. There is a famous legend about Betsy Ross. The legend is a story that has been told through years and may or may not be true. According to this legend, Betsy sat at her shop sewing and enjoying the light of a warm summer evening. In June 1776, when she heard a loud rapping at her door, John's uncle, George Ross, stood before her with two other men. One of them was General George Washington himself. Good evening, madame, he began. We have an important job that needs to be done very quickly. As your husband John was a patriot and you are known to be the best seamstress in the colonies, we feel that you are the right person for the job. Do come in, Betsy replied. I will heat the kettle for tea and you can explain to me your business. Thank you kindly, dear Betsy, said George Ross entering the house but I am afraid we do not have time to sit down. As you may have heard, the Continental Congress is meeting here in Philadelphia for a second time. We are on our way to a meeting this very evening. Soon, quite soon, we will formally declare our independence from Britain. We must be ready with a new flag for we will no longer want to fly the flag of the British king. Betsy stood still, listening to his words and turning to General Washington, who had taken a scrap of paper from his coat pocket. Mrs. Ross, General Washington said, this is your chance to show your patriotism or love for your country, as your late husband John did. I have drawn a rough design sketch for the new flag. Please take a look and let me know what you think. We would like for you to sew the first flag of a new nation, 13 colonies united against Great Britain. Betsy, took the slip of paper from General Washington's hand. On it was a square drawing of 13 stripes and 13 stars. Betsy nodded her head and then looked up into the General's face. Yes, I accept. I will gladly make the flag. Might I offer one suggestion, sir? George Washington liked Betsy's suggestion of a five-pointed star instead of the six-pointed one that he had drawn. Then the three visitors turned and left as quickly as they had come. 
Betsy set to work on the flag the very next day, taking down a red bolt or a roll of cloth from the shelf. She measured and cut seven strips of equal length and width. Then she did the same thing with a bolt of white cloth, this time cutting six strips. She applied her famous even stitches along the length of each strip, first a red and then a white, until 13 stripes of alternating colors joined together to form a large rectangle. Next, Betsy measured and cut a square from a bolt of blue cloth and carefully stitched it into the upper left-hand corner of the flag. Days later, when she had completely finished, 13 white stars almost twinkled in the perfect circle against the dark blue background. When Betsy showed George Washington and his fellow representatives the finished flag, they were very pleased. They knew this flag would represent the new country well. This new flag stood as an important symbol to the men who gathered under it on the 4th of July when they voted to approve their letter of independence to King George. One year later, in June 1777, the Continental Congress officially adopted Betsy Ross's flag the Stars and Stripes as the national flag of the United States of America. Stars and Stripes is a name often used for the flag of our country. I hope you enjoyed our story and the activities you may have scheduled today. Next time, we will learn more about General George Washington, the commander in chief.